All right, what is up you guys? We're out here with a new project, which yes, that means I've got a, another car in my driveway. Um, hopefully this one will be a faster flip than that Corvette, which I still have sitting around. Um, but uh, let me show you what it is right here. Got a 2004 RX-8. Um, RX-8s are a little bit quirky. Um, so I'm going to go through this one and tell you what's going on with it and whatnot. Alright, so we are in this car. I'm going to start her up. So she starts up just fine. Uh, if you don't know anything about RX-8s, they use a 1.3 liter rotary motor. Um, rotaries don't use pistons, so... They're different in that aspect. Uh, I don't know if you can read the odometer down there, but this thing's got just 45,000 miles on it. Uh, so fairly um, low miles for a 2004. Um, RX-8s, they're kind of quirky. Um, you know, this was the first year for them. Um, so one thing that uh, this car uh, has got going on is the radio you see here um, I'm turning the volume up and down but I've got no sound coming out of any of the speakers um, as well the so this is a six-speed manual transmission um, but these clutch pedals on these RX 8s um, are known for having a weak point in the weld um, and they tend to fail so you can see down there got the clutch pedal you can see it's kind of pushed over a little bit towards the brake if you uh, push it in all the way it pushes in but when I pop it back out it's only been coming about halfway and then I'll pop it out with my uh, toe but it's actually the uh, spot weld on the bracketry has uh, broken so um, I've got a replacement clutch for that as well as a uh, a fix for the radio and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that. So these radios are a little bit tricky. Um, it's got this massive head unit. Uh, you know it's fairly decent radio. This one came with a six disc CD changer which was pretty big back in the day for a 2004. Um, you wouldn't know it you wouldn't know it unless you noticed right over here on this door tweeter but this is a Bose system so um i was reading the forms on these cars and one of the things that uh they say is that you know this car has no sound coming out of any of the speakers and there's a bose amp in the back of the trunk and they say that that can if that goes bad then you won't have any sound from any of your speakers so uh, we're going to go in the trunk and we're going to check that out and see if we can get that fixed. Alright, here we are at the back of the car. I'm going to show you where the Bose factory amp is. So if you open the trunk and you come down here and you look up, that is your Bose factory amp. It's got two plugs um, that hold that uh, send it power. So if you look at this uh, cable right here the red and white one and the black so uh, are gonna be your two powers I checked this earlier with a voltmeter with the car on uh, to see if it was receiving power and it was so I went ahead and I ordered a new unit so we're going to uh, test it to see if that's the problem and to see if um, the radio will work once we get this on so obviously the uh, Bose one is mounted up there above um, where before taking it out we're just going to um, plug this one in and see if it works and then we're going to take it apart and put it in its correct spot All right, so we are back in the car. We're gonna start her up, 
see if we got any uh, sound to come out of this radio. So we've got all the lights on. We've got a local uh, radio station on here. Let's turn that volume knob. And it seems to be working now. So um, we've got that fixed. Well, we've got it working. Um, now we're going to have to take apart the uh, back seat here to uh, mount that Bose factory amplifier. So um, we're going to get to that and we're going to uh, take it out and uh, get this radio back to stock. Okay, so we're here in the back seat of the RX-8. Um, the amp that we need to replace lives up here in this middle panel. So unfortunately, the only way I know to get to it is to remove the entire back seat. Um, so we're going to have to remove this, this bottom seat, this back, and um, the plastic um, panels. Uh, in the very very back so honestly the to remove this seat it's fairly straightforward you just grab it you lift up it's got two clips two clips right there that hold it in place and two clips on the seat so I'm gonna set that off to the side for now um, and I'm gonna get the rest of it done Oh, I guess I should point out the next two things we got to do. Um, there is a bolt there. And if you look over here, there's a bolt. I'm getting my camera angled right there. So there and there on the bottom, I'm going to have to pop, uh, take those out. And then this whole backrest will come off. So we're going to use this little plastic rivet prior to get the uh, the bolts, the plastic bolts that hold this plastic piece. There's one here and one here. So we're going to tuck the seat belt behind the plastic piece and we're simply gonna have to start prying this up. Also this piece here on the right, on the side, you have to peel back to get the other piece to slide over it. So we've got the back panel finally off. We've exposed the four bolts to undo the uh, 
amp and when we remount it we're actually going to mount it from underneath so that if we ever have to do this again we don't have to pull off all these plastic interior panels to do this uh, so let's get started All right, so we're going back into the trunk. You can see we've got everything taken apart and we're gonna mount from this side now. All right, I got our dash on here, going over to the radio, it's on a channel. And it is still working. Now something something I like to do, or something I, I would check, um, is you would go into here and, um, let me find it. You go into, uh, you go into the settings and you get check the rear uh, really you go to each corner of uh, the audio system so you go uh, rear right rear left front left front right and just make sure that all of your speakers are working correctly I already did that with this one and everything was working correctly so uh, as far as the radio goes we're good to go um, now we're gonna move on to the next project with this vehicle all right we pulled the uh, clutch pedal out of the packaging. This is the new one here. I uh, wanted to show you on the new pedal what we're gonna be doing just cause the uh, old one is up under the dash. It's hard to see, I uh, can't really see what you're doing. But we've got a bolt up there on the top left. We got one there on the bottom right. They're 12 millimeter sockets. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be using. Uh, it also came with new sensors that goes right there. And there's one that goes there. Um, the weld right here, that is the weld that typically breaks on these RX-8 clutch pedals. Uh, that's where the failure occurs. Um, so when we pull the old one out, you'll be able to see that. But uh, as far as me working up under the dash, you probably won't be able to see much. But I'm going to uh, get after it.
talk about that. That was a huge struggle. Um, mostly because right here you see where that top bolt goes on. Um, you can see where uh, the metal has warped and it was keeping me from putting the socket on the uh, on the uh, nut to, to back it out. Um, that was probably the biggest struggle. Uh, there was a other another bolt at the very top that I didn't mention earlier, uh, so you'll definitely need to remove that. Uh, there was a sensor here on the right. The one here in the front just kind of popped out on its own. Um, you can see we got the plunger here, which uh, actually sits up here uh, on that thing. But you can see all the metal, how distressed it is and how just broken. Um, I guess really a poor design on Mazda's part, but um, we're going to replace it with a factory one and uh, get this car going again. Oh, another thing to add, I took off the uh, the left pedal, or your left footrest here because the uh, bolt fell, I'm sorry, the nut fell uh, behind it, and so I had to remove it. It was just 10, two 10 millimeter bolts. Sorry, you're getting blinded by my cell phone light. Um, and also there's a piece of our um, clutch pedal assembly. So I uh, might leave that out for just a minute just to clean it up um, and get all that dirt and gravel and all the other stuff that falls down there that you can't ever really get to. Um, but other than that, if you drop the uh, nut back there, you'll have to pull that out. But it's just two nuts. Not a big deal at all. All right, I got the uh, sensors that came with the new pedal. It did come with new sensors, so I'm going to use those. Um, I could have reused the old ones, but I'm not. Um, so I got the new sensors on. Now all to do is to throw it up in there and uh, then uh, line everything up. Hopefully this is a lot easier than it was to take it out. So here we are back in the car. I'm gonna see if this uh, clutch pedal fixed it. So got the clutch in, gonna start the car. Got nothing. Huh. Looks like something is not right. Okay, so I thought we were done underneath there, but as you just saw, the car didn't start, and it's because the um, the uh, clutch sensor right there that you see um, needs to be reset and I did not do this when I installed it so as you can see the plunger is not actually in contact with the clutch pedal so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to pull that switch out and um, 
pull the plunger out until um, it's fully extended all the way out. Uh, shouldn't be too hard to do. I'm gonna try and do this real quick. Did you hear that loud click? That means it's reset now. Now we can reinstall it back into the car. Back in the car. Now let's try. All right, we're back in here. I've got the clutch to the floor. And that was it. That's all we had to do was reset that switch. And the uh, clutch pedal assembly is completed. So that's everything that I had to do for the car as far as little fixes here and there. Um, now we're gonna list it for sale and see if we get any hits. So thanks for watching.